The final score, Wrexham 5, Gloucester City nil. This was a, a very enjoyable afternoon's entertainment, although poor Gloucester, I think I want to start off by just talking about them. Uh, they had a miserable time of it, of course, in the last week. Ten players uh, unable to play because of COVID, and our best wishes go to them. Uh, the makeshift side, which had uh, players, three youth players making their debuts and three more off the bench. And the, the first team players they had were particularly youthful. So all credit to them. They caved in after half an hour. I've got to say. But up until that point, they showed up plenty of guts. They didn't really threaten Wrexham's goal, to be honest. Uh, but they should be applauded uh, down the bottom end of the division below us. But they played with a lot of heart and determination. And, and they were determined to give a good account of themselves. And frankly, they did. So well done to them and to their fans who travelled down in such circumstances to watch it. From a Wrexham point of view, well... We also had our problems, although we have a deeper squad, of course, and so we were still able to put out a strong team. And we looked good, especially after that second goal in the 31st minute. It was a game totally dominated by Jordan Davis, who put in the most virtuoso performance you, you could possibly hope for. Scored two goals, could easily have ended up with five, probably won the goal of the season award. It was magnificent to watch. Anyway, Wrexham started well. But there weren't that many chances in the first 20 minutes. The best that Wrexham could muster was Green driving the ball in. It came out to Cleworth, who from 25 yards out did really well to control a volley. That, the ball came at an awkwardish height, but he just couldn't direct it on target. It went wide of the left post. Just before the halfway mark in the first half, um, Gloucester made their, the one chance really worth mentioning. A neat little move, good patient play. Ended up with Galvin getting up from left back and driving a shot from 20 yards, which whistled over the bar. Well struck, but always looked like it was going over. Wrexham responded swiftly. Young sweeping in a corner beyond the far post. Jordan Davis peeling off and scuffing a shot just wide from six yards. It was an odd one because it was a very good chance to start off with. It was strange to get that sort of chance from that sort of corner. A crowded six-yard box. Davis stepped off and just nobody else reacted. So ironically, he probably had time to take a touch on the edge of the six-yard box before hitting it. So he'll have been disappointed of that. But not for long, because 90 seconds later, he had score opened the scoring with a very nice finish. Cleworth doing well down the left, playing a little one-two with Cameron Green and then sweeping it across towards the penalty spot. Davis attacking it and driving a volley into the ground which zipped over the keeper and into the roof of the net and Wrexham were ahead, a fine finish. Three minutes later, another chance. Davis could have had a five-minute hat-trick and actually this was the best of the lot. Cleworth intercepting really well, feeding Hosanna. He swept in across. Davis, this time unmarked, eight yards out, a glorious opportunity, fell on his weaker right foot, he hit it on the volley, and the goalkeeper was able to dive low down to his left in order to, to save it. I, I must say as well that the, the keeper, uh, Brezozowski, making his debut for them on loan from Torquay, also did all. That was the first of a, a few decent saves that he made. In the 31st minute, Wrexham doubled their lead and it was a turning point of the match, really. And what a goal it was. It started off quite simply with one of the Gloucester youngsters, Gardner, miscontrolling the ball 30 yards out on the right flank and losing it to Jordan Davis. How harshly he would be punished as Davis burst inside, got to the edge of the area and then just scored the most magnificent goal, shaping the ball over the keeper, the outside of his left foot, curling, dipping, beautiful goal and Wrexham were 2-0 up. And Glo Gloucester, I've got to say, caved in at that point and within the next five minutes could easily have shipped a couple more as Wrexham pushed on. There was panic in their penalty area. As a ball was swept in well by Ponticelli, Thomas got up ahead of the ball just wide of the left post. Then Green beat his man and swung it across. Ponticelli's header, too straight, was saved before Davis, uh, intercepting a bad ball out from the back, an ambitious first-time pass, and nearly put Ponticelli one-on-one -on -one with the keeper just out of his reach. It was a good idea to play it first time because there was so much space in the middle, just couldn't quite hit his man. And then straight from that, <laughs> Brezozowski 
carried it to the edge of the area and threw the ball out and very nearly threw it straight to Hosanna, who was just beaten to it by the stretching Nugent, or Hosanna would have been one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. So real panic. Um, they tried to right themselves, but Wrexham did have other chances. Nugent at the back giving the ball away. Cleworth picking the ball up and finding Jordan Davis, who beat his man and lashed in a shot. It was going inside the right post. Brezhovsky did really well to get down low and push it round the post. The corner from Davis was cleared. Young had a shot from outside the box, which was going wide. It was blocked and span back to him. And he hit another very powerful shot right from the edge of the box, which just scraped the left post to the keeper beaten. Wrexham were astonished when a goal kick was given, as they all felt that Young shot had taken a decisive deflection. Two minutes from the end of the half, one last chance. Again, Davis beating his man and feeding the ball through. Just again overhit, and Brezhovsky was quick off his line to just beat Ponticelli to it. Second half, Wrexham started in the same manner they'd left off the first, and within three minutes of the restart, had the 3-0 lead. A ball into the box, cleared as far as Cleworth, who scored his first goal for Wrexham in a grand manner, 25 yards out with the most... Fabulous clean strike, just smashing it back into the roof of the net. A lovely finish for Cleworth, who had a fine game. And it was one-way traffic then. Davis going on a run with Thomas, bursting through the middle. And as he Davis tried to apply the coup de grace and pop it inside for Thomas to have a, a tap-in, Brezhovsky was able to lunge and intercept. Moments later, another moment of danger. This time, Davis with a full pullback for Young, who was lurking, waiting to finish. A lunging tackle intercepted before, in the 56th minute, the moment we were all waiting for. It was fantastic to see Kwame Thomas back on the pitch, and he got the goal that he wanted. And it was down to his hard work as well. He chased and pressured Galvin, the left-back, forced him into a mistake in the box. Ponticelli was one-on-one -on -one with the keeper, but couldn't quite bring it under control. The ball rolled away from him. Galvin had a chance to hook the ball clear, but took an air shot, missed it, and Thomas, who was pressuring him again, slid in and managed to roll the ball under a defender and under the goalkeeper to score. What a wonderful sight to see Thomas scoring again at the race course. A popular figure, a fine player, and a goal to remember. Wrexham just kept pushing on. Four minutes later, Thomas looked like he might have had another one. Hosanna with a great cross on the right-hand side. Thomas attacking it and smashing an emphatic volley into the roof of the net from eight yards out. But the flag was up. And although it was the closest decision, it was correct. See Thomas about half a yard ahead of the last defender. Wrexham kept pushing. Young feeding the ball over the top. Davis... Uh, sorry, beg your pardon. Young with a short corner on the right and Davis on an extravagant run from the right flank to the left before finally hitting a shot which was deflected and dropped on the left-hand side. Cleworth scared, squared it and from close range Ponticelli turned the ball on target. Brezhovsky did really well to get out quickly and block it with his feet. It was kind of hard to believe that 40 minutes of play after Davis' second goal, he hadn't got the hat-trick yet. He was so dominant. He had one more go at it. And if this had gone in, I'm telling you, this would have eclipsed his last goal, I think. Again, doing so well on the edge of the area as the ball's dropping awkwardly. He wriggled and his change of body shape beats the man. And then he tries... A similar finish, outside of the foot, dipping shot, but also with curl as well, aiming for the top left corner. The whole stadium held its breath, and it just scraped to the post as it went part wide from the edge of the area. A fabulous effort. He was substituted immediately. He and Thomas, who had managed to get 70 minutes into his legs, br brilliant stuff, news for us, were taken off. And on came Jake Bickerstaff and James Jones. Within a minute, Jones had a goal. <laughs> Wrexham uh, feeding it over the top. Bickerstaff important. It was a great ball over the top, down the left. And Bickerstaff timed his run perfectly to get round the back of the fence. He pulled the ball back in the goal mouth. Defender got a foot to it. Poked it out to Green, who did ever so well. Very calm. He thought he'd hit it. Instead, he faked to, but went round the outside of his man. Pulled it in. And from close range, Jones stabbed a foot forward and poked it into the net. And that was it. 20 minutes left. Wrexham in the comfort zone and then just protecting the ball, moving it around nicely. The only other real moment of note to mention. 11 minutes from the end when Ponticelli was taken off and Kai Evans, a 17-year-old, was given 
uh, last 10 minutes to have a bit of a run out and look very lively, very eager and very quick. It's an emphatic 5-0 win for Wrexham. Impressive performances all round. Lainton, completely unemployed. No shots on target for him to deal with. At the back, the back three, well, Toza was imperious. He didn't have that much to do. He was so calm under pressure, though. It was, it was enjoyable to see. He, he looked a cut above without really being put into any great extreme situations. Tyler French had a good defensive game and in the second half drove forwards well and got into a couple of good crossing positions and drove decent balls into a danger area. And Harry Lennon on the left-hand side, again, with a bit more scope to come forwards, did well. Uh, so the back three, though, weren't massively tested. Cloweth in a bit more of a holding role than you might expect from this Wrexham team. We don't tend to play with a sort of defensive midfielder. He did have a bit more scope to go forwards in the second half and ended up with a goal and an assist. Uh, super performance by Cloweth, who last week showed what he can do as a centre-back and this time has shown what he can do as a central midfielder. He really did look controlled on the ball. He won a lot of headers. He was able to show his mobility, breaking down the flanks to get into positions to deliver the, well, uh, the assist for the first goal and then the ball in which could easily be an assist Ponticelli being denied by the keeper in the second half very very good all-round performance by Cloweth the midfielders Jordan Davis out of this world phenomenally good absolutely brilliant to watch and fantastic to see Luke Young given the chance to play a bit further up than he normally has been by Parkinson shuttled around to good effect was unlucky with that deflected shot and also when a good interception stopped Davis from picking him out and marked on the edge of the area but a good captain shift the wing backs were massive in this game Gloucester started off with a diamond and they really congested the middle of the pitch well that's why the first half hour saw us move the ball around well have virtually all of the ball, but not really create that many chances. But we were patient, we handled it well, we kept moving the ball around, and then when the situation was right, pinging diagonals and bringing the wing backs in. And they were massive threats, both of them. They regularly got the full backs isolated and beat them. And then as the game wore on and Gloucester tired, we really started to get full value for both of them. Um, Bryce Susanna, I think, will be a little disappointed perhaps at his end products because he, he overhit quite a lot of crosses and he may be a little disappointed not to pick the out. Cameron Green was tremendous, really did well. And apart from the brilliant assist for the fifth goal, just in general was a, a real threat. And then up front, well, I mean, Ponticelli, such a shame he didn't get a goal. His endeavour was terrific. He deserves a lot of applause for the way he conducted himself and he was a constant nuisance for the defenders but then Kwame Thomas alongside him did get his goal and of course his performance may be the one that we'd look at the most closely he wasn't quite himself goodness me he, if he was after such a layoff and an injury it would be a miracle but he looks certainly a lot further down the road to being ready to play than I feared he might he was enthusiastic, eager. He kept going really well for the 70 minutes. Typical endeavour and energy from him. Took his goal well and was a constant threat. I was thinking last Saturday we had problems with quality of cross. Thomas, with his area ability and his predilection for attacking the six-yard box, is a, a good man for making bad crosses look decent. He'll contest for stuff that maybe was not good. And we saw a bit of that today. It's a super performance by Kwame in the circumstances considering what he's coming back from and brilliant to see him score so great fun that was uh, it was very enjoyable strange feeling at the ground a good crowd nearly 2000 for a fa trophy first round match strange though because you know, gloucester had to get changed in the racecourse foundation classroom just like away teams were doing during lockdown and there was a clear sense of wanting to protect our players and make sure we can still play on Boxing Day. Let's hope that we can. Let's hope that we're able to continue with things uh, because that was fun. And I'd like to see Wrexham build on that. With a final score of Wrexham 5, Gloucester City 0. I'm Mark Griffiths from Wrexham AFC.